on and praying for, I will call it life transforming messages. Messages that transform your life. In the first week, what we were sharing was on the word of the Lord to us that go forward and therefore we were inspiring faith that take a step of faith. This is the season of going forward. This is the year of progressing. This is the year of advancement. So take a step forward. Hear that word from God and you too. Just take a step forward like Peter. Peter was in the boat and they saw Jesus. By this time, nobody, no human being has ever walked on water before. But they saw Jesus walking on the water. Peter also wanted to go forward. He wanted to go forward with his faith. And he said, Massa, if it is really you, if that is what I'm seeing, if it is not a ghost, if it's really, really you, tell me to come. Peter wanted to go, but he said what? T tell me to come. Because when Jesus says it, no man can say no. When Jesus says it, he can walk, not on water, on the word, and then walk on the water. Come on, say amen. amen. So there are times your faith must be sparked. So in the first week, what we were doing was to spark your faith. Okay? This week, Monday, Tuesday, and tomorrow, Wednesday, is to transform your life, to change your life, change your character. Okay? Because there are times you can take the step of faith, be it in a play, or oh, there is a saying, we, uh, there's a saying, just... Uh, you can go high, but you need character to maintain you in the high place. That's why yesterday you heard about faith. Today, I'm going to lead you in prayer. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yesterday, you heard about fear. Okay? We get rid of fear from our lives. Tonight, I'm going to talk about pride. Getting rid of pride from your life. Tomorrow, somebody will continue with the getting fear out. So three days will be character transformation. Say a big amen to that. All right, you, you heard me last Sunday preach about uh, pride. Pride and fear. These two things we said you can cross your Red Sea. Huh? You, can even, you can even jump over your Jericho wall. You can even enter the promised land. But if there is fear in you, if there is pride in you, you may not be able to take your possession. You follow me? You follow me? Pride. It's a very dangerous condition for a person to have. One thing which makes it dangerous is that you can have pride in you and you wouldn't even know that you are a proud person. When they tell you that you are proud, you rather get angry. That you say you are insulting me, which is another evidence of the pride. But pride can, can prevent you from taking hold of your inheritance. Why, Pastor, why do you say that? I'm just showing you from the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, the final authority, life, everything. So Proverbs chapter 16 verse 5, that is the first one. Quickly, projector, please help me. Let's read. Everybody, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. God is saying, when you carry pride in your life, 
He said, one day, one day, one day, I will punish you. He said, I will punish you. I will punish you. And, and, you know, those of you here who study the Bible, very few places that God talks about punishing people. He can talk about discipline and correction. But I don't know any other thing he said, when you do, I will punish you. When God sets up to punish you, it is very, very, very serious. You can see that one of the punishments is in the Proverbs 16, verse 18, when he says that uh, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. That means when God is punishing you because of your pride, you are going to fall. In fact, in the world, worldly people say it this way. Pride goes before, before the fall. But actually what the Bible says is what? Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit. A haughty spirit is also pride. A prideful spirit huh? starts showing. Then you know, after the prideful spirit has shown itself what is coming after. For, because God will punish the proud person. Let me show you another verse where God says, I will punish you for pride. Okay? Obadiah. Obadiah. Go to Obadiah. Obadiah chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Obadiah. Okay, this one he was talking about Edom. Okay? Edom. I think I made a mistake during the morning devotion. I said Moab, the Moabites. But it's actually Edomites. He said, Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. Yeah? Yeah, hey, amen. Next verse. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is I, you are there saying, you have said in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Because you think you are dwelling in the rocky place, your habitation is high, nobody can bring you down. You are in a secure place, so you become proud. And you see the amazing thing here, God said, you say in your heart. So where is pride normally located? It starts from the heart. Is it visible? No. It's only evidenced by your attitude, your conduct, and the way you behave, and sometimes the way you walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God said here that he will punish the, uh, the Edomites. He said he will bring them down. Uh, okay, verse 4. Read next verse. Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will do what? I will bring down. So you see, when you see people falling in line, or sometimes when you are prideful, when you are full of pride, and yet you are going higher, 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 the, this word, the Bible, has predicted or prophesied that a day, a day, a day will come, you will fall. It may not be now, but he said the day will be coming. When the fall starts, it will come boom, like this. If you've been on the morning devotion today, I talked about King Uzziah of Judah. Very interesting person. He became king at the age of 16. And so the Bible says he went to Zechariah, the priest, and said, yeah, for me, I'm just 16 years old. I don't know anything. You have to guide me. So Zechariah was guiding him, and he was following the Lord. Pe, 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 pe. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5, as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him prosper. So he prospered. 
He became so big that his name was famous. He did a lot of good things. And he was going higher, 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 higher in life. He had palaces, built cities, did great things. And for money, he had them. And then when you are going high like that, what the Bible teaches us, acknowledge God. Acknowledge God as the source of your prosperity, of your going high. He said, don't forget where you have come from. But King Uzziah forgot. Second Chronicles chapter 26, go to, hey, is the person there? Go to verse 16. Verse 16 and see. Verse 16, he said, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Tell the person next to you, God forbid, that that should happen to you. That your heart becomes lifted up. Tell him, remain humble in your heart, and then you will not be destroyed. Oh, hallelujah. Because the Bible already says it, that pride goes before destruction. So this king, his, uh, his heart became lifted up. Then he says, for he transgressed against the Lord, his God, by entering the temple of the Lord. Oh, is that a sin? No, entering is not a sin. But he entered to do what? To burn incense on the altar of incense as if he were a priest, but he was a king. He did not belong to the priesthood. Now the power, the prosperity, the money, the position of the king got into his head. He woke up one day and thought that, oh, what the priests have been doing, me too. I can do and I will do. Hey. Tap the person next to you, tell him that may such a thought never, never enter your heart when you are prospering, when you are prospering, when you are, when your, the time of your prosperity comes. Turn to another person, tell him that, oh, the way I see you now, you are humble. Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because you and I, <laughs> we are in the same place. But one day, tell him one day, one day, you will prosper. When you sit under this ministry, tell him your prosperity is on the way coming. Tell him when that time comes, don't let your, your heart be lifted. Brother, so we are telling you before that time comes. Yeah. Before that time comes. Amen. The prayers we are leading you to pray, some of them will be dealing with your future. Yes, Even if you don't understand, just follow us to pray. Yes. It will be establishing you in your future. So, the Bible says, let's go on, verse 17. So Azariah, the priest, went in after him. Because when he entered the temple, instead of sitting down here and be praying, he went to where the priests operate from. So Azariah went after him, and the Bible says with him were how many priests? Eighty priests. To do what? Just to stop him from making or committing this mistake or this error, which has arisen in his heart, because of what? Pride. Pride. When the pride is in you, may God help you by sending you somebody. May God help by sending you somebody. You remember David? One time, he, he, David of all people, our favorite king, one time he said, hey, now the Lord has established me. My army is great. 
So he said, you have, go and count, take census of Miami. I want to know how many soldiers I have. Even of all people, Job, Job was by Hato. Job was not correct. But this one, Job said, Massa, I beg you, don't do this. All the wars you have fought, was it not the Lord who helped you? Why do you want us to count the soldiers so that you can also be boasting? I have 280,000 soldiers in Miami. Job was talking to him. David refused to listen. He said, go, count. I am the king. When I talk, go and obey. So Azariah, yeah, let me read on. Then my time is up. 18. And they withstood King Uzziah, Uzziah and said to him, it's not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but it's for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated. Their whole life, they are to burn the incense. Get out of the sanctuary. Now, when you talk to a king like that, you are running yourself into problems. He said, get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah became furious. Now, this is 81 priests who have come to advise how many people? One person. And you still can't listen. You still can't listen. What level of pride is this? 81 people just advising one single person. But now he is the king. He's gone everything. So, he, the Bible says he got angry. But when he got angry, what he did, we are not told. He just says that. And while he was angry with the priests, I'm sure he threatened to slap some of them. What do you think he did? <laughs> it says, then immediately what happened? Leprosy broke out on his forehead. That means uh, uh, some spot here. Huh? Some small growth began here and turned white like this. And immediately the thing started, pus was coming out of it. Just there, as they were talking, just there. God said, the pride, the prideful person, I will punish. So God punished him. God punished him. And the laws were there. If you have leprosy, you are not to enter the temple. So what did they do? Leprosy broke before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the incense altar, yeah, next verse, and Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him, and there on his forehead, he was leprous, so they thrust him out of that place. Indeed, he himself also hurried to get out because the law had struck him. But even the punishment has not stopped yet. Let's read the next verse, and you see how heartbreaking it was. And King Uz, Uz, Uziah, or how do you pronounce it? Uzziah. Which school did you attend? Achimota. Accra Academy. Oh, my school is. Uh, Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house because he was a leper. Meanwhile, this is the person who had palaces and built cities. But any time he saw the palaces and the houses, he said, yeah, I have done well. Pride was growing, 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 growing. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord. So he was in isolation until he died. Please get up on your feet and tell the person next to you that that 
Tell him or her, as long as I'm here, that will not be your story. I will come and advise you. <laughs> I will come, I will be your advisor. That don't give room to pride. Tell him, furthermore, tonight, I'm going to pray for you. I also need prayer. Tell him that pride will not remain in our hearts. So that when we become prosperous, we will still keep our prosperity. When we lay our hands on our inheritance, we will not lose our inheritance. We will be transformed from one glory to a higher degree of glory, from glory to glory, not from glory to a fall. Hallelujah. So tonight's prayer is to eliminate pride from our lives, not only now, but even for the future. Because for now, most of you are humble. <laughs> but for the future, I don't know. But the word of the Lord is coming to you before your time of prosperity comes. Oh, praise God. Let me give you one verse which we use in prayer. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Paul said, I have to tell you the same thing again and again. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Let's all read together. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but... How many people are we to submit to? The elders and one another, hey, and one another too. My co-equals too. Yes. I have to submit to them. Yes. Hey, this Christian life is <laughs> a life of submission. Yes. Uh, so say after me, Father, Father. Give, me a give me a submissive heart. I count into your presence today. Asking for submissive heart. Every rebellion in my heart, every pride that is in my heart, I am laying it down on the altar tonight. And let's do it like this. Some of you who this message has come to directly and your hunger is to have a, a submissive heart, you come to the front and pray. Those of you who are just in the middle, you can remain there and pray. Shall we start praying? When you know what God is telling no, no, you, no, 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 no. Franklin, Father, Franklin, the name of take Jesus, the microphone and join me in prayer. Heart, in the name of After Jesus. that, you come and kneel down. Oh, Lord God. Yeah, I want to pray. This one is for your heart. The heart is your inner person. A pride is hiding there without your knowledge. You are not conscious. You are not conscious of it. I want you to pray and say, oh God, oh God, I want my heart to be a submissive heart, willing to submit to the other, willing to submit to one another. Just give me a submissive heart. Give me a submissive heart. 
Say we should submit to. And we said the elders, and number two, submit to one another. But there is a third person. The word of God instructs us don't harden your heart against those people, but submit yourself to them. And that is in James chapter 4, verse 7. Project James chapter 4, verse 7. Let's read together. Ready, go. Therefore, submit, submit to, to God. God. Okay, no, hold it there. Submit to God. Say after me, Father. Father. I want to submit to you. I, I want, want to submit, submit to you. Touch my heart. Touch my heart. This evening. 
this, this evening, in this time of prayer, in this time of prayer, that my heart will experience a transformation. Will experience a transformation. I will become submissive. I will become to the elders, to the elders, to one another, to one another, and above all, and above all, to you, Jehovah to God. You, Jehovah God. One more time, pray for oh, yourself. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pray for yourself. Father, oh God, God. Yes. your special yes. person to you, that I give me the grace to you, submit to you, God. That I give me the grace to submit to you, God. When you hear the word of God, of Jesus, that my heart will come to you, God. You want. To obey. Let my to my heart be that you will want to submit. Even as I submit to one another, regard. Touch my heart. Above all, Lord, let me submit to you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, regard. I pray, O God, for the grace to submit to God. I want to be submissive to you, O God. I want to be submissive to you, God. Somebody in the Bible who showed that he had this grace, Abraham, when God spoke to him, and say, go and make a sacrifice on Mount Moriah for me tomorrow. Guess what was the what, guess what was to be the sacrifice? His son. His son. And when you read the Bible, Genesis chapter twenty-two, verse three, he said, early in the morning. Abraham was not late. Some of you, you come to church late, mm. but Abraham was not late because mm. all inside him, whatever God says. He wants to do. Amen. It appears so impossible or impractical to go and sacrifice your son. But let's read together. Ready, go. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey. Was he late? No. Did he say, let me think about it? No. Did he say, let me consult the others? No. What did he do? Early in the, in the morning. Oh, God. May the Lord grant us submissive hearts. Amen. So that we will be submissive to him first. Yes, Lord. Whatever he tells us, we will not delay mm. in doing it. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take the hand of somebody. Those of you in front here, don't go. Take somebody's hand and pray that, Lord, show mercy. Let her not be arrogant. Mm. Especially to your word, let her not be arrogant. Whatever you tell her, let her be prompt in doing it because she has a submissive heart. Shall we pray? In the name of, of the Lord Jesus. In obeying Father, the Lord. Father, I pray for your daughter. Father, God. God. Promptness. Let your daughter be In obeying the Lord. Father, we Help come against this thing. In the spirit, spirit, spirit of God. In the spirit of God. If you are going to do what he says, 
to make them. We can as well do it very early. Even when you have raised them up to tonight, we pray on this altar of God that your spirit of humility will clothe her. You will clothe her with humility in the name of Jesus Christ. Even when she has been blessed and prospered, oh God, she will still be humble, oh God. She will still be humble and sober, oh God. She will still be obeying your will, oh God. She will still be obeying your voice, oh God. She will still, oh God, hearken to your voice, oh God. She will not be arrogant to God like it was Zyra, oh God. But Father, oh God, she will know, oh God, what you are saying to her, oh God. And she will obey, oh God. She will not fall out of line, oh God, to your will and to your ways, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, oh God, that Father, oh God, day in and day out, oh God, your grace, oh God, will find her, oh God. To be humble, oh God, in everything that she does in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell somebody these are life transforming times? These are life transforming times. Tell him that even by prayer, even by prayer, your life can be transformed. Your life can be transformed. Tell him in prayer. In prayer, you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. You yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. So as we pray on these matters, so as we pray on this, on the matter, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is transforming your life. Is transforming your life. It's putting something in your inner person. Putting something in your inner person that will make you be a different person. That will make you be a different person. By the end of this prayer meeting. By the end of this prayer meeting. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands properly. I haven't released you. You came to the altar yourself. I'm detaining you here. You know, sometimes before the prayer meeting, I pray, I ask God, how will the meeting go? And this is one of the things I saw in my spirit. So, Amen. stay here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Next prayer topic. You know the amazing thing? There are some people in this life, they don't take corrections. Mm. They don't like corrections. I you have to knock their head. How many times? Before they would take courage, you've seen it tonight. Yes. 81 priests were talking to one person. He said, ah, Don't do kakai. Don't do this. Because, because apart from being an abomination to God. You are crossing some lines. Brother, I've seen people in this church who you want to correct them, they get angry. So what I'm doing here is very real to us. There are people who get angry when you want to correct them. They want to be there, be church, and come to church, but they, but they want to preach to them. They want to bless them, uh, pray for them, do this, do, do welfare for them, do everything. But when you want to correct them, they say, hey. <laughs> Look, it was Zechariah, a priest, who helped minister to Uzziah and he got to the position. Now another priest wants to correct you. Why would say he became furious? There are people here who don't want correction. Let me show you another person. When David did whatever he did with Bathsheba, did God himself come down? Did God come down to talk to David? What did God do? He said, hey, brother, if you can't take correction from another man, huh? hmm. 
If it is an angel, do you, you want an angel to come and correct you? The angel will not exercise patience. Angel, they don't have patience for our nonsense. <laughs> so it is only a man God will send into your life mm. to correct you. Mm. Tap the person next to you. Tell him, be willing to be corrected. Be willing to be corrected. Tell him, as part of your Christian life. As part of your Christian life. Receive correction. Receive correction. From the people whom God will send. From the people who God will send. Into your life. To your life. And tonight I pray for you. And tonight I pray for you. That you will be correctable. That you be correctable. You will take correction. You will take correction. Mm. Imagine. So when Uzziah was in leper's house, mm. alone, alone, even the cook, they will bring food and open the door, put the food in, shut the door. So Uzziah, the king, became and lived alone all his life. Don't you think sometimes he regretted he would have been saying, oh, I wish I had listened to Azaria. Take the hand of the person next to you. Pray for him before that time comes. Before so that he will not comes. live in the land of the regret. You will not live oh, in Jesus. the land Pray of now that transformation oh, will come oh, into his heart. He will take correction. He will be willing. He will receive correction. Correction. The Lord God Almighty, you will be correctable. You will be so pray for him. That will As he also prays for that you, will prevent she will you from going into she destruction. That will make you avoid the wrath of God. Let that God Himself, when He sends men to your way, you will listen and obey and be corrected by that which you are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you tonight that you will be a human who has set correction in your life in the name of Jesus. Whenever a correction comes, you will be willing to accept it. And you will be convicted you to accept it. In the mighty name of Jesus, even when you are lifted up, even when you are crossed, even when you are high and lifted up, you will be able to receive correction, to be obedient to correction, to your fellow and to the one God who said to you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Rabba <laughs> Shabba <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen. Say after me, Father. Father, send your people. Send your people. Your messengers. Your messengers. Your prophets. Your prophets. Your priests. Your priests into my life. Into my life to correct me. To correct me when I am on the wrong path. When I am on the wrong path. For there, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. For there is a way that seemeth right unto man. But the end thereof. But the end thereof. 
is destruction. Is destruction. destruction. Say, Father, Father, when I'm on the way to destruction, when, when I'm on, on the, the way, way to, to destruction, destruction, send my pastor into my life. Send my pastor into my life. Send your messengers into my life. Send your messengers into my life. I am willing. I am, I am willing, willing to receive correction. To receive correction. Above all, above all, let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit be my guide. Be my guide. Let the Holy Spirit instruct me. Let the Holy Spirit instruct me. I am willing. I am willing to receive instruction. To receive instruction from your spirit. From your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody put your two hands together. May this prayer time bring a transformation into your life. Amen. Amen. You know, on the month of transfiguration, when Jesus was praying, they say his garment, everything changed. So transformation comes through prayer. Amen. This prayer time is life-changing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, you may go back to your seat. Be willing to take correction. Last prayer topic before we go. What about those of us who have rejected corrections in the past and we are suffering for it? Do you know when even Joab tried to advise David, David didn't receive it. Do you know he suffered for it? What price did he pay? You can't tell. Most of you are quiet. I should say it. If I tell you next time when I'm correcting you, don't be angry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, let me stay on that David thing, on the pride. I think it's First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21. Oh, oh. I say First Chronicles. You have to knock that guy's head. Now, you see, now, this is where pride comes from. Pride. Look at pride. What's the source of pride for David? What was the pride in his life? Read that verse and see. Read it. Everybody, ready, go. Now, Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number yay. Israel. What is the root of pride in man? Satan. Because he said first, I will ascend. I would take God's place out of his pride. Then one day, he came and moved what? David. Why? How do we pray on this now? Uh-oh. Say the blood. The blood. Of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus. By the blood. By the blood. I prevent Satan. I prevent Satan from bringing me suggestions. From bringing me suggestions that will make me proud. That, that will make, make me proud and harbor pride. And harbor pride in my heart. In, in my, my heart. heart by the blood. By the blood of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus. Please lift up your hand and pray for yourself that you will be so covered by the blood. You will not receive suggestions from the devil. You will be close to suggestions from Satan. Let your blood cover me, O God, so that Satan will not make suggestions to me that I will obey his voice. The close my by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, we do warfare tonight. Protected under the blood, under his blood, we standing right under the blood. Right under the blood, 
I heard another blood. I stand in the blood and immune myself against any suggestions of Satan. Akadi bazanda da 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 ba, masanta da 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 branta ba da ba da ba da ba, masete de de brande ba ya da 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 ba, ati brande ba shenta da 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 ba ya, rababazanda ba ya de ba ya ba da ba ya ba, rababa ba shada 